Kuwait Amir dead at 91. That's right. The Amir is Sheikh Saba, and he is no more. And this is from Channel News Asia. Kuwait's Emir Sheikh Saba Al Ahmed Al Saba died on Tuesday, September 29th, age 91, plunging his country into mourning for a leader regarded by many Gulf Arabs as a savvy diplomatic operator and a humanitarian champ champion. Now, he was the ruler, the Emir, during. I'm assuming. Well, maybe, well, let's see. Maybe he wasn't. When did he start to rule? Let's find out. The cabinet announced his brother and designated successor, Crown Prince Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Sabah, as the new ruler, in a statement read on state television. The parliamentary speaker tweeted that Sheikh Nawaf, 83, wow, well, 83 year old man's going to take over. All right. 91-year-old man dies. What is this? Is this the Pope? Isn't that how they do it with the Popes? Pick old guys near the end of their... Uh, so they don't have a long term. I think that's what strategy is general. Let's just pick old guys. They're really old. Like, you know. They won't rule long. And plus they're weak. So we could like totally mess with them. Yeah. Awesome. Great plan. Sheikh Saba had ruled... The I'm just kidding. I'm sure these are... Fully cognizant, able, awesome human beings. Um, no disrespect. Sheikh Saba had ruled the wealthy oil producer and U.S. ally since 2006 and steered its foreign policy for more than 50 years. Okay, okay, steered its foreign policy. Okay, so he ruled uh, since 2006. So he did come on after the Gulf War. So somebody else was there before him. So he took over in 2006. That means he was a spry. Uh, what, a spry 77, 76, 77? We've got a young man here. Oh, they went a little bit too young. He got a bit of a long rule. Oof. With hearts filled with pain and sadness for the Kuwaiti people, the Islamic and Arab world and nations of the world, and with faith in the will of God, the cabinet mourns. Sheikh Sabal Allah Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah, who died in the United States on Tuesday. Oh wow, died in the United States on Tuesday. That's today. It's the timing. As a, you'll see this tomorrow morning. So, as of the timing of this Tuesday, 4 p.m. Kuwait time. That's that's not even 4 p.m. our time yet. So that's really. In line with the Constitution, the cabinet names Crown Prince Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabir Al Sabah, Emir of Kuwait. It said, "I'm not going to say those names again. It's a lot of, a lot of, a uh, lot of names for one name. <clears throat> Let's just call him Sammy and uh, Ted. Sammy is the one that died, and Ted's the one taking over." <laughs> The Emir have been in hospital in the United States since that's disrespectful. Just, just just stop that. Don't ever do that again. The Emir have been in hospital in the United States since July following surgery for an unspecified condition in Kuwait for that month. That month. Unspecified uh, following surgery for an unspecified condition. Oh wow, didn't even you know, he got the best of the best of the best of the best. He got billionaire doctors. Whoever did the work on this guy. I mean, I know he died, but doctors can't stop death. Still, I want to find out who the doctors are, because you want those doctors. President Donald Trump earlier this month awarded the U.S. Legion of Merit to degree chief commander to Sheikh Saba in what the White House said was the first time the honor had been given since 1991. The Emir eldest son, Sheikh Nasser, accepted the award, and the incoming Sheikh is, uh, yeah, it's going to be a smooth succession there. Uh, Kuwait Dinar fell against the U.S. dollar. Uh, but that'll dip back, back up because no, no, we got an old man there. Old man, old man, replace an old man. We're all good. We got a new old man. A new old man. Boy, that's an oxymoron, but maybe not. Kuwait's Emir Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Sabah. You know, I'm not going to do it. Stop it. Stop it. Kuwait mourns Emir, veteran defender of Arab uni unity. Kuwait's Emir, influential voice in the Middle East, dies at 91. 
And Sheikh Sabah, Kuwait leader who tried to heal rifts, dies at 91. Crown Prince becomes oil rich Kuwait's new ruling emir. Let's see the Crown Prince. Young Crown Prince. Young man here. It's a young man. Look at that. It's a young man's game. You see that? It's a young man's name now. That's why we got this young 83 year old man just thinking, hey, yes, I got these. I got these. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, what does this mean? Do I get more. Uh, I get more bedrooms or something? What do I get with this? I can do All right. I don't know if his life going to be all that much different, honestly. It's like, yeah, uh, I guess I got to do a couple more uh, duties. I, I don't want to say, like, any kind of... Uh, I want to make some sort of stereotypical jokes about death penalties, but I don't think that Kuwait is that kind of uh, country. I don't know that they have such... Let's see. Does Kuwait uh, have a death penalty? Kuwait... Death penalty blasphemy. See, when you got death penalties for blasphemy laws, I do not like you. Okay, there we go. Blasphemy is illegal under Kuwait's publication laws and under the penal code as slander or liable. Kuwait close to death penalty will offer bad. Okay, there you go. Kuwaiti, and this is from 2012. Kuwaiti jailed for 10 years for Twitter blasphemy. <clears throat> Let's see when this one is. Kuwait, uh, the amendment, which would apply the death penalty only for Muslims, was backed by only for Muslims. Isn't that nice? So, 40 members of Pilate, while six opposed it. What is this from? So, this is from 2012. So, I don't hear anything else about this. So, so did they pass it then? They approved. There we go. The approved death penalty for uh, blasphemy. So that's now one. So there you go. That's what you're dealing with there. This is Kuwait. And here's the national anthem of a country that will kill you if you violate their uh, their mythological uh, uh, parameters of uh, what is decent and right. And I say anybody that uh, resorts to certainitarianism, even like especially within their own religious family, like. If you're going to be a, a moral certainitarian within Christianity, that's like a whole other level of mistrust for me outside of just the general certainitarianism. Uh, uh, the, 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 the rigid, I and mean, when I mean certainitarian, I mean that you have like a notion of a very particular Christianity and a very particular way that you must follow or else you're doomed to the fires of hell. And I feel that way no matter what, like whatever. If you're partisan within your own faction, if you're rigidly partisan with your own faction, would not want to live there. But then if I'm American, maybe leave me alone. Here's their national anthem. <laughs> Kuwait, my country, may you be safe and glorious. May you always enjoy good fortune. Kuwait, my country, may you be safe and glorious. May you always enjoy good fortune. Kuwait, my country, Kuwait. Okay, you notice, uh, I don't know if the rest of the anthem is like this, but at least the first part, you notice there's no killings in it. Nobody's talking about dying or killing. This is a rich country. They're like, oh, man, no, that's for the peasants. We're, 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 we are the, our whole country is the 1%, literally. I mean, I might be a bit hyperbolic, but here we see where Kuwait is, a little tiny little world there. There's their little Kuwaiti universe. It's ethnic groups. It's 40% Asian, 30% Kuwaiti, 27%. Look at that. Is it only there's there's thirty percent Kuwaiti? So this is like a wow, a constitutional sovereign state. That's what Kuwait is with a semi democratic political system. Kuwait is a high income economy backed by the world's sixth largest oil reserves. And the dinar is the highest value currency in the world. So, like I said, no money, honey. Get that get that cabbage flow. You go to Kuwait, man, that's where it's at. But I never realized that they just... Kuwaitis are only 30% of the population. That means the, the, the pluralistics are the Asian. Now, when they say Asian, I don't know what they mean. Because Asian, especially in European, the way the Europeans use the term Asian, they mean much broader. Like, they include Pakistan, India, all of that is Asian. Americans, they typically think of Asians being just like Chinese, South Korean... Vietnamese. I mean, really, when it comes down to it, uh, they differentiate. The Asians are the ones with uh, whatever the, the eyes are. I can't forget what the eyes are called that produce that uh, that, that uh, characteristic of folks in the. I don't know what. 
I don't rem- I don't know whatever their alleged uh, ethnic uh, family is, but uh, uh, for for I think I think they mean Asian in in a broader sense here, not in the American narrow sense. Religion, Islam. Look at that, eighteen percent Christianity. So that's why, like, even their blasphemy laws, they won't kill you if you're just if you're a Christian. They won't. It's only the uh, I mean, imagine belonging to a rich religion, you know, like. If you were in Old Testament times, you belonged to one of those religions. But thankfully, our Old Testament grew a New Testament, or like we Christians at least. And the, uh, the, the Muslims, by the way, there are many different types of Muslims. And they have their own, I guess you could say in a way, their own New Testaments. The Quran is their Old Testament, and then all the, the Hadiths and other writings. And they have differences as far as what they recognize as sacred and not sacred. And some of those at these basically do to the Quran what the New Testament does to the Old Testament. It's like, okay, that was the context then. But listen, we're now in a spiritual truth space, so we're not going around murdering people for crap anymore. We've left that world. But apparently Kuwait is still a little bit swimming in the more, uh, I kill you, I kill you now. You know, I kill you where you stand. Year one, that movie year one. I'll tell you where you stand. All right, so with that note, I think I am done with this story. That's about all I really wanted to say. And we're going to end it here. So I thank you very much for uh, joining us for this segment of uh, Frico, uh, really, Frico Talks in the News Bar. So have a great rest of your day because, oh, why the heck not?